Hey guys, today I am reacting to Finland might have solved nuclear nuclear power's biggest problem. So um should be an interesting video. Uh yeah, uh I'm hoping that nuclear power is adopted more widely around the world. You know, safely of course, but still more widely. It really needs more uh, adoption all around the world because it's, it's one of the best things we can use it produces so much power so much more efficient um than all the you know other uh, green energy sources we have it's like if we actually want to stop using fossil fuels we need to switch to nuclear that's what i found you know so let's get into the video it's an immense project since 2005, Finland's been constructing the largest nuclear reactor in Europe alongside a facility that could solve the problem of what- The largest? Oh, damn. Interesting. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool though. I mean, if Finland's taking the initiative, then I got to applaud them for that. What to do with spent nuclear fuel? When you think nuclear, the Nordic nation doesn't immediately jump to mind, but if all of its planned projects come to fruition, then by the end of the decade, the country will be second only to France in terms of the percentage of energy drawn from nuclear systems. And France is pretty good with its nuclear energy, you know? But uh, unfortunately, they might be getting rid of a lot of it. A lot a lot of that might be due to Germans, uh, Germany coercing France to get rid of using nuclear, which is really sad, honestly. France needs to continue using nuclear, in my opinion. Germany has a, just a bad nuclear policy, in my opinion. After more than a decade of delays and cost overruns, 2022 will see the world's happiest country switch on one of the planet's most advanced reactors, potentially kickstarting a new age of nuclear power. And I heard India is also using like uh, some advanced nuclear power, especially from like um, I think a new I guess like a new um, radioactive element. Like that's not often used. I think it's like something with the try try something, tritium maybe. I think they have like a tritium nuclear reactor. I like they're experimenting with that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Finland actually has a long history with nuclear power. Its first reactor came online in 1977, and by 1980, three more were operational, providing a third of Finland's total energy needs. While these reactors are among the most efficient in the world, running at a 95% capacity factor for the past decade and continually being uprated over their life cycle, growing demand and the seasonal fluctuations of other renewable sources like hydro and solar has left the country relying on imports from Russia and Sweden to make up the balance of its energy needs. To lessen its reliance on foreign energy and help meet its goal of carbon neutrality by 2035, the Finnish government approved the construction of what was meant to be the world's first third-generation pressurised water reactor, or ERP, at its Olkiloto nuclear plant known as OL3 in 2005. With an initial cost of 3.9 billion US dollars, OL3 was to nearly double the plant's existing output and provide 14% of Finland's energy needs when it became operational by 2010. But while OL3 was the first EPR to begin construction ahead of other next generation reactors in France, China and the UK, complexities surrounding the design, defects in safety systems and contractual disputes led to over a decade of delays, and in 2018, China's Taishan-1 became the first EPR reactor in the world to start operating. Despite these delays and the cost swelling to over 10.2 billion US dollars, OL3 was granted an operation license by Finland's Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority in 2019, and in March 2021, 116 tonnes of uranium began to be loaded into the reactor ahead of its final testing phase. Once it's connected to the grid and the reactor begins commercial production in early 2022, the countdown will be on until OL3 begins adding to Finland's spent fuel stockpile. 
Nuclear power is an incredibly clean way to produce energy, but it does create a byproduct, and it's the one problem we've yet to truly solve. After three to six years, irradiated material is no longer able to sustain a reaction as a viable fuel source, and new material must be brought in to maintain the reactor's efficiency. But while it's unable to generate electricity, spent fuel remains highly radioactive and needs to be isolated for hundreds of thousands of years to prevent- And I think there's new methods of like reusing spent nuclear f f fuel as well. Yeah, so I mean, constant, uh, constantly new ideas are coming out to improve nuclear uh, energy usage and such. Prevent it causing harm to people or the surrounding environment. Although spent fuel can be re-enriched and re-enter the fuel cycle, the main way we currently deal with radioactive waste is to simply store it in pools or sealed dry storage facilities while it slowly decays. While these methods keep spent fuel contained, it's not a viable long-term solution as the system is heavily reliant on mechanical and human intervention, and even under the strictest conditions it can be vulnerable to attacks of terrorism or natural disasters the kind that led to the events at Fukushima in 2011. I know most people in you know, Fukushima died because of the natural disasters, not because of the nuclear incident. With an estimated 250,000 tonnes of high-level waste already in storage around the world, and with no long-term strategy of dealing with it, many countries have chosen to completely rule out nuclear... One of the stupidest things in my opinion, especially nuclear phase out is just a really stupid idea especially at yeah, germany as you can see in spain not good to phase out nuclear energy it's really necessary their power when it comes to meeting their growing energy needs in an attempt to solve this since 2005 posiva a joint venture between finland's two nuclear power providers has been constructing the world's first deep geological repository for spent fuel in the billion-year-old bedrock not far from OL3. Funded by charges collected from consumers through electricity sales, the one billion US dollar project that's due to complete in 2023 will see a series of tunnels extend half a kilometre below ground, creating a permanent disposal facility for spent fuel. Now, while burying nuclear waste might sound alarming and may cause concern to environmental groups, the process at Onkelo is so much more than simply burying the problem. Based on a Swedish disposal method known as KBS-3, irradiated material is placed into boron steel canisters and enclosed within corrosion-resistant copper capsules before being buried in individual holes and backfilled with bentonite clay, entombing it forever. Once buried, no further mechanical or human intervention is required to contain the radioactive payload, essentially eliminating one of the biggest barriers many countries have when it comes to adopting nuclear power. Neat. With the capacity to accommodate the last 50 years' worth of Finland's accumulated spent fuel, and the needs of its existing reactors until at least 2120, at which time the facility will be permanently sealed, Onkelo appears to provide a viable long-term solution to dealing with nuclear yeah, waste. Honestly. Described as a game-changer for the industry by the director of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the lessons learned at Onkelo are being shared with other countries, and regions with suitable geological characteristics are being considered for similar disposal sites. Having seemingly solved the biggest drawback of nuclear power, and with a sixth reactor already planned to begin construction next year, Finland looks set to play a leading role in the widespread adoption of nuclear technology as the world continues to transition away from fossil fuels. This video was powered by Bluebeam. You can learn more about that at the link below. And Honestly though, I'm super excited for what's to come and Finland looks like it's leading the way. Awesome stuff. I mean, Finland's a cool country. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Let's check in some of the comments. A lot of engineers and architects will thank you one day for inspiring them. Guys, burying this isn't a good idea. Bury it deeper. Genius mate, bloody genius. I thought you were going to tell us they perfected some kind of breeder reactor that would re-enrich spent fuel into a usable product so it didn't need to get buried anymore. Instead I learned they were just burying it <laughs> bigger 
better and harder than ever before. <laughs> Regions with suitable characteristics are being considered for similar disposal. Showing world map. Nearly Africa is nearly 70% covered as geologically suitable. I know exactly what will happen. Yeah, oof. Add on the fact there's already extremely there's already thousands of extremely deep diamond, cobalt, and lithium mines in Africa. Yeah. Oof, 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 oof. That computer diagram of the tunnels was expecting little red and white umbrella logos and Mila Jovovich to appear. Wait, this whole video boils down to just down to just bury it good. <laughs> Turns out that's just fine. Overcooked, really. That should be the takeaway. Georgie, what do we do with the spent uranium? Easy, put it back where it came from. Onkalo literally means all. Finns have very creative names. Also, it's pronounced Onkalo. Onkalo. Where on is pronounced like on, ka is pronounced like cotton, but without the un, and low is pronounced like low without the t. Okay. So is it on kalo or on kalo or is it on kalo? I'm not even sure. Um, interesting. Another possible alternative is molten salt reactors with thorium. They are cheaper to make, safer to run, and the waste that are processed is not only a lot less, like many multiple less, due to the recyclable freshening of the fuel. The actual ash waste only has to stay only has to stay stored safely for three hundred years. And not the thousands of years that tons of reactive waste, the LWRs, produce today. What is the primary blockage stopping this from advancing? The proliferation of LWR. There's just been a ton more research and work done to make them work instead of MSRs. If the past research and work had been done to promote and use MSRs, we'd probably be in a fossil fuel less world right now. But in the 60s and 70s, the atomic owning governments of the world needed enriched plutonium for their AE bombs. And so all efforts went into LWRs. Enriched plutonium isn't a byproduct of MSRs. And even though MSRs could theoretically be built so small and safe you could power a home with them. Damn. Oof. Wow. Money is a major causation, but never a primary one. The cutaway image of the underground portion of the plant looks very similar to the cutaways I've seen in the chambers in the Great Pyramids at Giza. Old solution, stuff it on the ground and forget about it. New solution, stuff it away on the ground and forget about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, having worked in the nuclear industry, I can appreciate your massive undertaking. Thank you again. A thorium fueled liquid salt reactor, nuclear reactor, does not create radioactive waste. However, it can be used to process it and render it harmless. For instance, plutonium has a storage life of 100,000 years. That can be reduced to 100 years. Damn. Honestly, this is getting me excited. It's really cool stuff that's gonna happen. Alright, so if you enjoyed my reaction, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.